I'm Andrew Huberman, and I'm a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine. Today, we are discussing mental training and visualization. Mental training and visualization is a fascinating process that has been shown over and over again in now hundreds of studies to improve our ability to learn anything. When I say anything, I mean the ability to learn music, the ability to learn and perform mathematics, the ability to learn and perform motor skills in sport, in dance, across essentially all domains. The other incredible thing about mental training and visualization is that as you'll soon see, when you go into the literature, that is the scientific studies on mental training and visualization, you quickly realize that it does not take a lot of mental training and visualization in order to get better at anything. However, that mental training and visualization has to be performed in a very specific way. And today we will discuss exactly how to do mental training and visualization in the specific ways that allow it to complement the actual performance of a motor or cognitive skill to allow you to learn more quickly and to consolidate, that is to keep that information in mind and body so that you can perform those cognitive tasks, music tasks, motor tasks, etc., for long periods of time without ever forgetting how to do them. All of mental training and visualization relies on what I consider really the holy grail of our brain and nervous system, and that's neuroplasticity. Neuroplasticity is our nervous system, which of course includes the brain, the spinal cord, and all the connections between the brain and spinal cord and the organs and tissues of the body, and then all the neural connections back from the organs and tissues of the body to the brain and spinal cord, so the whole thing in both directions has the ability to change in response to experience in ways that are adaptive. That is, that allows us to do things that we could not do before. And by doing those things, or by being able to perform those mental operations, we can do better in the world that we live in. We can perform new tasks, we can think new thoughts, we can come up with novel solutions to pre-existing problems that before really vexed us and that we couldn't overcome. All of that is considered neuroplasticity. So today what I'm going to cover is a brief summary of what neuroplasticity is, that is how it occurs in the brain and body. This is extremely important to understand if you're going to use mental training and visualization. Then I'm going to talk about what happens in our brain and body when we do mental visualization in a dedicated way. Many people have heard perhaps that when you imagine something happening, that your brain doesn't know the difference between that imagination of the thing happening and the real thing happening. Turns out that is not true. It is simply not true. 